Welcome to part 11 of Ocarina of Time. And we are going to continue on through Dodongo's Cavern and finish this dungeon once and for all. Now here, what you want to do is take out the slingshot and uh, aim for the eye switch to get rid of the flame. So that we'll be allowed to cross and uh, continue onward. Of course, be careful down this corridor. There are baby Dodongos here. Kill th you can kill them if you want or ignore them. But remember, when you kill them, they explode. That's not good. In this room, we got more Lizaphos to fight. And it's pretty much the exact same strategy as the other set. One will attack, you damage that one, they'll retreat, the second one will come, and uh, yeah. Also, I want to let you know this because I haven't mentioned this in any LP as far as I'm aware. Uh, the music for this game, um, like when you encounter an enemy, changes. Like, it'll be all peaceful music, but um, then afterwards it'll be like um, ominous music whenever an enemy comes. So, yeah, I like that little bit, knowing that you hear battle music, but where's the enemy? Where's the enemy? And, yeah, that's going to be a continuing trend throughout many uh, Zelda games to come, especially in the 3D departments. And... Uh, this mini boss music, I like it here personally because um, it gives a sense that this is a, more than an enemy, but pretty much less than a boss. So it has to have its own music. So, yeah. Anyway, folks, that's it for the uh, lizard foes, at least in this dungeon. Spoilers, we'll encounter more in future areas. Oh, and if you want to know where I am, we are in the upper area of the lower Lizardfold rooms. As, I, as you can see what I'm doing here, where I'm, go, where I'm going towards the, those hearts. There is that lava waterfall. And below, as you can see, is the bottom area where we fought two Lizardfolds earlier. Now, if by some chance I happen to fall down and um, land on the bottom, that means I would have to climb my way back up and... Um, get to get to this point and that's terrible so watch your jumps anyway go through this door right here and we will encounter a uh, another uh, eye switch puzzle it's pretty much the same thing as before except this time there are two uh, flame columns shoot the eye switch here to lower this flame column and then quickly shoot this eye switch to lower the second flame column and then quickly jump across and uh, yeah and then you will find yourself back in the blade trap room another area of the blade trap room actually alright now what you want to do here is go to this treasure chest right here and we are going to get a new item The bomb bag, which means now we have our own set of bombs to use. At the moment, it's 20, but we could get more later on. So, yeah, now we have the ability to uh, use our own bombs, and that is fantastic. Oh, that bombable wall, that leads to a business Deku scrub when it's not worth it. Anyway, we go here and step on this switch right here. One of the pillars in the main room will actually start rising to the upper area. Which means we have just created a shortcut from the first and second floor in the main room. Yeah. Now what you want to do here now is take our newly acquired bombs. And see that big, um, what looks like a Dodongo skeleton? What you want to do is use our new bombs and try and aim for its eye sockets. And, uh... You might not get the fright the first time, so what, what's best to do is walk over towards the edge as much as you can. Alright, like right here. You gotta be careful. Then drop the bomb in the eye socket, and it'll explode and light one eye. And that means you gotta do the same thing to the other eye socket. Again, watch your step. Drop the bomb. Make sure you don't drop it on the wind bridge or else you might, or you'll take damage. Anyway, when both sockets are red, 
The door will open to the next chamber. Hooray. Alright. Now, of course, if you go down this way, there's a bombable wall right there, and... Boom. Now, inside is this treasure chest right here, and I think... Well, there are rupees inside, so yay. But I think there is a wooden shield in there if you lost it, or else uh, one of the business day crew scrubs. Yeah, there are business day crew scrubs in this dungeon that will offer you um, shields and sticks and whatnot. So, yeah. Again, folks, in order to not lose the wind shield, just use the Hylian shield throughout this entire dungeon, and it'll save you the trouble. Hey! Yeah, 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 Navi, I know! I know, shut up! I know, we can use that plat pillar to go from the first and second floor. So let's do so. Anyway, folks, you're supposed to jump from here and try and land on the platform, but, um... What I've done here, by accident, of course, is accidentally um, kind of uh, get myself into the lava. And, and you'll see here that I have um, take pretty much uh, only a quarter damage. Well, half damage, because I walked into it twice. So, yeah, and here are the here's the ladder that can allow us to get back up. All right. So now that we have this uh, new passageway to explore, let's um, explore it. Of course, again, you gotta wait. La 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 la. Alright. Of course, be careful of the Beamos again. But now that I have some bombs, or you can either ignore it or blow it up with your newly acquired bombs. Alright. Let's go through the store right here, and in here we will encounter some keys. Of course, if they manage to hit you, you will briefly catch on fire, and the longer you're on fire, the more um, health will be drained from you, and that's no good. Of course, I expect the other one to come down to attack me, however, it's uh, not doing so. So, uh, let's we'll go into the next chamber. Oh, and if you see the skull on the map on the bottom on the left side of the uh, map, that means that the boss is through that door. And we need to get that door unsealed in order to get to it. Now, to do so, go down this pathway here, and we will encounter a couple more um, fire keys. Of course, um, they won't come unless you're actually in the area, so they can home in on you. I mean, what is with these keys anyway? Gotta love the Hylian shield, folks. You can just duck down like a turtle or something, or some kind of other shelled animal, and yeah. So let's just go down through this area right here. And go ahead and jump off. And of course, kill the keys because it lost its fire. There. No more enemies in this immediate room. Hooray. Alright, what you want to do now is... Um, you see uh, these blocks right here? Well, what you want to do here is see the one I'm standing on right now? What we have to do is move it so that we can get it over to um, this block right here. And from this block, we need to um, push it off this ledge right here so we can use it as a stepping stone in another area. Now, we can take this block and go ahead on to the end, or we see here that there is another bombable wall. And I'm going to go ahead and use this block to get over to said bombable wall. Because, well, we want to get into that room because um, we want to get something out of that room. And that something is another um, gold skull tola. Yeah, we got to collect those tokens because we collect tokens, we free that family, and we get prizes. 
So once we get up here, place a bomb here, run away, and it will reveal a door. Now, the Skull Tala is behind this Armos. Yes, that's an Armos there, not a statue. Now, you can actually get the token if you are actually absolutely careful. Take your slingshot to destroy the Skull Tala and slowly move behind the Armos. If you do this correctly, the Armos will never come to life and it won't attack you. So, just be aware of that. And when we're done in this area, we we'll go back here. The only bad news is, though, the puzzles have reset themselves, which means what we got to do is, uh, well, we have to do that whole thing again. Use the blocks to um, get this one block on the ledge over to the other end. And, of course, this also means that the keys have returned, which means we got to kill them again. Yeah, don't you just love respawning enemies in temples? I mean, dungeons, whatever. Uh. But don't worry folks, this is the last video of this dungeon. We will be completing it. We will be fine. We will be fine the boss. So um yeah. All right. Now we're going to take this block and just uh, move it over to this ledge over here. And it's going to be take it's going to take a little bit of work because um, it's a big block and Link's a little kid. I mean, I mean, even I mean, the kid's got amazing strength as it is um, being able to pull and push it. Speaking of which, how is Link pulling it? Because I don't see any uh, grooves unless the symbol in the middle of the blocks counts as a groove, which I guess it does. Yeah. Anyway, when you get the block here, Climb up, and we have to move this other block that's uh, blocking our path. Come on. And as you can see here, there's this little indenture, like, right there, which means we cannot move the block further. Now, folks, right there is a fairy. Yeah. You're saying, uh, you already have a fairy. You have Nabby. Well, this fairy is different and special. What it explains here is that this pink fairy here is pretty much a uh, pretty much an equivalent to an extra man. What I mean is that um, if you happen to catch a fairy in a bottle like that one, a pink fairy, if you happen to lose all your hearts and die and during I don't know during a boss fight, the fairy will actually revive you, bring you back to life. And that is always awesome. So, folks, when uh, you ever see pink fairies and have an empty bottle, go ahead and grab it. And make sure you have one on you at all times. Because, again, they're considered free life. And um, it is very useful. And I'm, and I'm curious why Navi won't pretty much grant me free life, even though she is a fairy. But I guess because she's a white fairy and her purpose is more to... Uh, Focus on items, focus on enemies. So, yeah. Anyway, when you get to this ledge here, put the block down back to this room here. Make sure we kill all the keys because uh, they can be so annoying. There you go. There, dead. Now, what we want to do here is take uh, this uh, block. And see that um, hole in the floor? There is a switch right there, a blue pressure switch, similar to the one we've encountered earlier. And we need to push this block into the switch so that the door will be unsealed and we can head straight to the boss room. So, yep, yeah, it's almost uh, fighting time. Alright, folks, um, you know, it's always a good idea to save your progress in case uh, something bad happens. At least that way you can start your, at the, um, your last save file and, well, not have to do all this again. What you want to do here now is blast this, uh, dark spot, which will uncover a hole, which will take us to the boss room. 
And this chest contains bombs if you need any additional bombs. And, well, we need bombs in this fight because, uh, the boss is surprise, surprise, weak to this two bombs. Alright, folks. This is the boss. And it is a uh, big, big monster. Bigger than Goma. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Everybody. Meet Inferno King. Infer the Inferno Dinosaur King. King Dodongo. Yeah, King Dodongo, um, his strategy is kind of uh, easy once you get to know it. Once you, uh, what he does is he'll open his mouth to try and breathe fire at you. And when he does that, you toss a bomb into his mouth. It will explode. And that time it will be stunned and then do a jump attack. And then after you're doing one jump attack, he'll recover and he'll start rolling towards you. Now you can avoid the rolls easily by staying in the corner here or standing like on the edge of the lava pool. And after three jump attacks, he's pretty much dead. So this will be the last fight right there. There! And yeah, he's dead just like that. Infer Infernal King. Infernal Dinosaur King Dodongo. You're not so tough. I mean, the, the Gorons are afraid of this guy, seriously. I mean, they can't be him himself. Please. So anyway, the King Dodongo rolls into the uh, lava. The lava somehow hardens, and uh, yeah, we won. All right, so let's go grab our heart piece, which will increase our health to six hearts, and we'll just get into the war portal. We All right, we're back at the entrance to the cavern. Whoa! Hi, Darunia! <laughs> yeah, I know who you are. Whoa! Easy there, bud. Yeah, these guys don't know their own strength. They don't know that I'm a fragile little Kokiri kid who is... Uh, Pretty much, um, breakable. Well, even though I have six hearts now, I mean, yeah. Anyway. Anyway, he explains that the, uh, it was all Ganondorf's fault for causing this whole mess in the first place. Surprise, surprise. I mean, he cursed the Deku tree. It, I mean, he would also do this because, again, Ganondorf wants to get into the sacred realm. And the way to get in there is using those uh, spiritual stones, and yeah. And because uh, Link s s pretty much went in there and bravely fought all the dinosaur dodongos, Dar Darunia here gives us the spiritual stone of fire, Gons Ruby. Yay! Two down, one more to go. Oh yeah, and of course, by this act of courage, um, Darunia considers Link now a sworn brother to the Gorons. So that's kind of cool. And of course, Darunia suggests that we travel upwards more towards the mountain to meet the Great Fairy. And we are actually going to do that in part 12. And of course, the rest of the Gorons up here, and um, they want to give us a big old Goron hug. So, Link, run away! Run away fast, Link. See you in part 12. <laughs>